Is that hard? Hell yeah. Yeah, it's hard. But you know what else is hard? Being broke. Ne yeah, meaning leads tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Video has taken the world of digital marketing by storm over the last decade. My name is Parker DeCover, owner of Prime Edge Media, a full service video marketing company in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And since 2020, it's been my mission to help business owners across the nation harness the sheer power of video marketing. And the Camera Roll Chronicles is my attempt to supplement that with the industry's latest trends, as well as stories and lessons that we've learned from client projects and even special guests from adjacent industries. So without further ado, quiet on set please. And action. Guys, what's going on? Parker here from Prime Edge Media and welcome back to the Camera Roll Chronicles for our first in-person podcast. Yay! Uh, <laughs> today I have uh, Alicia James with me from Flamingo Consulting. Today we're going to talk about the different types of digital marketing that you would use for different circumstances. For instance, if you wanted to like get leads tomorrow, and you don't have time to build a brand, you know, what do you need to do? Whether you're starting a new brand or you need to refresh what you're doing or you just need leads tomorrow, um, we're going to discuss everything that, um, that we've used in the past with our clients and what we've seen um, out in the field as well. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna let um, Alicia kind of talk about uh, what she does at Flamingo and uh, then we'll get into it. So Flamingo Consulting, we do digital marketing, all forms, um, whether that's social media and organic content or uh, social media ads, Google ads, website design, email campaigns, pretty much if it shows up on a phone, we're working on it. Um, the goal being that we are trying to support our clients in growing as consistently as possible, but obviously lean leaning into their goals. So if they're trying to establish a stronger brand, build credibility, the long game, or whether we just, to your point, need leads tomorrow. We need to get as much traction as possible, or they've been doing something the same way, or they're building in one platform, and we need to help them expand into others. Um, do we? Can we talk about Tuesday and the giant Facebook switch off? Yes, we can talk <laughs> about it. <sighs> okay, we'll start there. So... On Tuesday, um, or well, we're recording this on March 8th. So this past Tuesday, today's Friday, um, Facebook shut down and the entire world panicked or well, my entire world panicked. <laughs> um, I mean, my world is fine. I put my feet up on the desk and went, sweet, this is awesome. And here's why, because Although Prime Edge is technically omnipresent, we're not utilizing the other social media platforms as much for lead generation. So for, for things like this, like it, it was a huge wake up call for us because we realized that like, oh shit, you know, Facebook can just shut off whenever it wants. You know, all of these platforms can shut off whenever they want. So we realized that we have to not only be more omnipresent, but we need to expand our client acquisition strategy to other mediums, just so that we don't get trapped like that again. Um, and, you know, we put out a, a reel about it and, you know, basically telling everyone else to do the same because, you know, with, with what's going on in the world right now, I mean, nobody knows it's going to happen. So it's, I, I feel it's imperative to at least have some sort of omnipresence. You know, there's plenty of people like you and I have talked about before, um, people who just rely on like their Facebook page mm -hmm. and that's their website yep. or, or they just have a website and they have no social, you know, and, and that sort of thing. So what do you have to say to, to those types of people? So the biggest thing that I would say, and we told our clients the same thing. We sat out on Tuesday after I've gotten, you know, five or six texts going, I think I got hacked. <laughs> And we sent out a mass email to everybody in our client list going, guys, stop refreshing. Facebook is down. It's not you. Don't, don't over, don't overthink this. Don't rush off and go try to unscrew it up. There's nothing broken from your end. You have to let this get fixed. And realistically, it was only down a few hours, but that panic of anybody who has built their entire business on one platform, specifically meta. I mean, we're talking about Instagram and Facebook. If that is where you've primarily built your business, 
you do risk getting shut down and your business going under. So I think the biggest thing that we're reminding people is not that you need to be everywhere, but that you do need to be diversified. If you really want to lean into social media, you should be on meta and on something else, whether that's uh, you're on TikTok or whether that's you're on Twitter or even on LinkedIn, depending on what your product is, your service is, you have to be in multiple places. Um, we also think that you need to own your client list. If at any point LinkedIn decides, you know what, we're going to tell you how many followers you have, but we're not going to tell you who they are. Well, you're screwed out of being able to spe uh, like specifically target or contact or reach out to somebody unless you already have through DMs. It's important to have your an email list. It's important to have multiple ways that you can connect and you are connecting with people consistently. Um, we think it's important to make sure you're doing it not only from you, but from through other platforms. To your point with Facebook and Meta, it's not just if Facebook or something like a server goes down, it could be that you get blacklisted, you get removed, you your Facebook page actually legitimately gets hacked. There are so many spam messages going out that they look legit and all of a sudden you're locked out of your Facebook account. And that means you're locked out of your business. If you're not protecting that by having multiple admins or you're not protecting it by you know not clicking on spammy links, you're likely to lose all of that traction in your business. And so being in multiple places is necessary in order to be sustainable. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. So now we're gonna get into the different forms of marketing and what you would use them for. So we're gonna start off with what we offer. So if you don't know what Prime Edge Media does is essentially we come into businesses doing half a million to five million a year and we act as their in-house video marketing department without all the investment and the nuance that comes along with hiring W2s. So what our stuff is really good for, especially on the organic side, is long-term brand building. And what a lot of like what a lot of local business owners say a lot of is we just need leads. You know, we just need sales. And of course you need sales. But that's why we do all of this. Yeah. You know, but at at the same time we have to consider how people consume content. I think that's like the biggest gap between us and our prospective clients is they say almost this. expect instant conversion. Yes. But what you're building is credibility. So when they're coming in, and we find the same thing when it comes to organic content, they expect, or our clients are coming in going, okay, if you make a post a day for us, we should start seeing leads tomorrow, right? Absolutely not. What we're doing is building a long-term funnel. So instead of constantly having to reach out and pull people in, eventually people are just coming to you because yeah. you are the expert in the field, whether that's in video production, like with you guys, or whether that's one of your customers and they are, I mean, they've built now a way to pull people into their own funnel yeah. long-term. Yeah. And what I like to tell people all the time is like the, the same strategies and stuff that we sell, we use to grow our business. Yeah. So for us, like it's, it's a huge no brainer because I've seen it work, you know, and I, I still use it every single day. We're posting content and what that content does is over time, it builds no like trust and authority with your local audience who you want to attract if you do it correctly, you know, and in a lot of this is around the, the point that you know, it takes 12 to 16 touches before someone even considers buying from you. So why would you think that it would be reasonable to assume that just because you hired an agency that you would automatically get leads tomorrow? Like none of us have a, you know, magic wand that we can just wave and customers rain from the sky. You know, it doesn't that happen. That would be really convenient though. It would. That it would be amazing. But um, what we do have are the tools to help you build a brand long term. And these things take planning. And not to mention, like, with, with how people are nowadays, like, instant gratification is almost an expectation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of people can't wait the three to six months that it takes to start building that traction. I mean, hell, I remember, like, when I started doing video on social, like, I was like, fuck, man. Like, n first of all, no one's watching. And the mm -hmm. ones that are watching think that I suck because I did. So. <laughs> I mean, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
so at the time, you know, I like I wasn't um, I wasn't dialed in with what we were doing. You know, we were just kind of trying to find um, any different avenue that we could go down because my philosophy was that like, well, I know how to make this work for other businesses. I just haven't made it work for mine. And that in and of itself, I think now I do think being a marketing agency and, you know, being in the marketing field that you should be like utilizing your own, uh, your own strategies to get mm -hmm. clients. But I was also dumb and in high school at the time. So like, oh gosh, you're such a baby. I know. Ugh. But I think my business has been around longer than you have. It's, it's close. You're, uh, you are close. <laughs> anyway. God, I'm, um, I'm really old. So, um, when it comes to, you know, building a brand on social, the, the reason that you want to do that, like Alicia said, is you want to build credibility, you know, and it does not happen overnight. This is the same thing, like old West Michigan business is, Oof. you know, it's its own beast. It's a, it's all networking. It's all just talking to people and making connections and, you know, maybe one day it'll turn into something. Or better yet, it'll uh, it'll turn into a referral, and you'll get business on the back end and from that person. Mm -hmm. So that's essentially what modern day social media brand building is. You just get to do it from the comfort of your couch, which is freaking awesome. Agreed. Um, but the thing is, is just like you need to learn how to network, you also need to learn how to put yourself out there on video and learn how to articulate what it is that you do in a way that's going to inform people and get them to trust you enough to book a call with you. You know, and that I think is one of the biggest issues that people have is because they just want to sell. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody just wants to sell and that's why we're all in business. We all like, of course, we all have our missions and our values and all the cute shit, but at the end of the day, we are all looking for sales. Because mm -hmm. without sales, we get no money, then we don't get to pay our employees, then we don't get to eat, then we don't get to feed our families, and then we, you know. I do really like to eat. Yeah. I mean, and my, uh, my small humans like food too. Yeah, It's kind right. of important. So, <laughs> with that being said, um, all of us want to make money. So, our natural instinct is to sell to everyone that we talk to, mm -hmm. you know, and what happens is what we're looking for in that type of situation is to appease us, you know, because we, we're selfish. We want sales and duh, rightfully so, yep. you know, but at the same time, if we consistently just sell and don't give people what they're looking for, then why would anybody trust us? Well, and your end consumer doesn't want to be sold. They right. need to understand what you offer. They need to understand what their need is and how you're solving for it. So when we're talking about organic content, you're fo we're focusing more on giving and engaging. Yeah. We need to understand like what they need and how best to communicate that. But more importantly, we also need to teach through organic there to teach people to engage with us. So we want those to be conversation starters, mm -hmm. not things we blast out. Nothing should feel from a marketing perspective with organic content, like you're constantly trying to sell them. Yeah. It should feel like we're giving things to you. We're connecting with you. We want to understand you or better yet, we already understand you and we just want to have a conversation with you and have you be part of our world. Yeah. That's it. You know, and that's why we run the Facebook group. Like in, and if you're not familiar, we, we run a Facebook group that is totally free to the public. And what we do in that group is we teach you all the different things that we've learned from growing our own brand over the years. And the reason that we do that is not to, you know, give away our business no. or get back at our competitors for something, although that's nice. Um, <laughs> what, what it's there for is for us to build trust with you and let you know that we understand what we're doing, you know, and we're showing you that we know what we're doing by teaching you what we know. And we give it away for free because we want you to see that this stuff, one, it works, mm -hmm. but two, it's really freaking hard. You know? yeah. and, and so if you need someone to, to outsource to, we're here, you know, and, and that's the, the type of messaging that I think everybody needs mm -hmm. is just, this is how you do 
certain parts of what I do. Mm -hmm. And if you want someone to do it for you, then we sell that to you. You know, I, I love the saying like, uh, give away the secret, sell the implementation. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's, I've never heard that phrase before, but yes, that's exactly it. Like realistically, anybody can create a video and post it on social media. Anybody can create a business page. Anybody can create realistically a website. Anybody can hit the boost button in social media and have an ad. It's the proper implementation and the best practices that we can bring to the table. And a lot of times we'll, we'll share it with you. We'll tell you exactly how we're going to do it and what we're going to do. But our expertise comes from our experience. It comes from knowing and watching and the fact that, you know, we can sit and watch an ad in test phase a couple of times a day. If you're a business owner, do you really have, you know, 15 to 20 minutes to go sit on and go look at your ad a couple of times a day no. when you're also managing every other part of your business? If you could, you probably would already be doing it. Yeah, that's a great point. So it's really that we bring the experience and the expertise and the implementation to the table. Anybody can do what we do. And that's what we're sharing is, yeah, yeah anybody can create a video. Anybody can create a post. You don't necessarily need 75 cameras and all the lenses and everything that maybe we have in order to do it or do it well. It's that we do have those and we do have the secrets to do it really well and faster. Yep, exactly. You know, and that's why I'm, I'm very transparent about the fact that like, you know, one, I like money, you know, like we're, <laughs> we're in this, we're in this to make money. However, there's a bigger purpose now that I'm, you know, I, I like to, I like to say this. There's a bigger purpose now that I'm well fed. <laughs> you know? So like now I'm I'm not so much at the point where I need to scrounge up every last dollar so that I can live. Yeah. You know, now I'm at a point where we have a team to build. And for for me now, my focus has shifted from making sales into helping people grow their businesses because what we've realized is the money comes with helping people grow their business. Yes. You know, and, and there's plenty of killers in the group right now that are making all of their own content and they're absolutely crushing. And kudos to them. Mm -hmm. Like, that's incredible that they have that amount of time to put into video marketing. You know, and that's what we need more of. Yeah. But for those who don't, that's what we're here for. So let's, um, let's talk a little bit more about like consumer behavior in in branding like especially on social oh so hold on, general hold on, hold on, hold on. No, what? that's fine we only got the time ticking here <laughs> <laughs> general consumer behavior is built on instant gratification and boredom especially as it relates to really anything digital so um i like to every time i'm describing this to a client like who is the person that is sitting there looking at your stuff, right? The algorithm is essentially, we're trying to build an algorithm. So it is engaging most or sending most of your content to your ideal buyer. In a lot of cases with businesses, our ideal buyer is the mom who's in speed scroll between 75 other things that she's doing. And we're just swiping. We're going as quickly as possible. We're trying to see what else is out there. And occasionally we pass something and go back. But realistically, most consumers do not do anything more than swipe past you. Yep. So we need to build things that will engage with somebody either to make them stop and go back or that even if they speed scroll past it, somewhere in their brain it registers, I'm engaging with this company. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we talk about this a lot and it makes clients crazy. Every single thing that you're putting out should scream your brand from even the coloring of it should be consistent, whether you're adding a watermark of your logo on there somewhere, um, whether it's something in the background, you know, like you can see my flamingo sign or there's might've hidden flamingos all over your office today. Um, but even looking behind you, like everything that you're creating screams prime edge. Yep. So if somebody passes you, they still know that you're part of their universe. Yeah. We want them to register that, which means that consistency in everything else. It's great that you can snag a picture on the fly, but you don't just go straight from, I took a picture with my iPhone to upload. Yeah. It needs to be reviewed. It needs to be branded. It needs to scream consistency. So if somebody goes and looks at your page, everything looks like it came from you, 
versus, I don't know what kind of crazy person took all of these pictures, but it <laughs> looks like I gave my phone to my 10 year old and she got all the photos from all over. And we have, I don't, I don't know where all these came from. That is not what we're looking for. We don't yeah. want 10 year old with an iPhone. We want professional. We want expert versus, you know, all over the place. Yeah. I feel attacked. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. Because I do, I do that. Um, I'm, I'm, I am very guilty of just. But I think we all are. I mean, let's be honest. Who's the queen of not doing video? Yeah. I hate being on video. I hate editing video. I am terrible at consistently grabbing video. Yeah. I'm just bad at it, which is one of the reasons why I think we get along so well because it's something that is your superpower. But I'll also call you on the why is this picture not branded? Why did you post this one? And it's you know, we each use our superpowers for helping the other person. And right. I feel like we do the same thing for our clients. Yeah. I'll be the first to say we should not be in charge of your video content. Like <laughs> we'll help you build some reels and we can help you with those things. But in terms of like a mission video or long form, or if we wanted, if you want to get into things like uh, podcasting, you want to connect with somebody like Parker because it's not something that we're incredible at yet. Yeah. And that's like, that's a huge contrast that we see with all digital marketing agencies mm -hmm. is the vast majority of them, if they do video, they also like lean into photos and ads and stuff, but they don't touch anything else. Mm -hmm. you know? And if they do everything else, they probably don't do video. It's because it's so specialized and it changes so much. Yeah. Every, I mean... Every three to four months, it's like a major shift in the industry or a new platform opens and it changes all video content in every other, in every other place. Look at when TikTok launched, all of a sudden everything became TikTok style yep. and it was incredible to watch even Instagram and Facebook have to adjust their styles and how they absorbed video and focused on video when TikTok released in order to compete. So I want to talk more about consumer behavior. Um, because I think, you know, what a lot of people don't understand is, so I hear this a lot and it's, I, I understand what we're trying to do with this video. I don't understand how we're going to get there. Mm, yep. I hear that a lot. And it's like, what do I say? You know, what do I say in this video? What do I do in this video? And it's like, what does your audience want? And that's what you need to be in tune with constantly mm -hmm. is what does your audience want more than anything? And not even your audience. What does your ideal buyer want? Yeah, that's what I mean. I it just, it, I feel like there's um, an innate lack in business, especially when you create a business leading with product or leading with a service where like you're really good at something. And so Let's say you're really good at baking. So you create it, you build a bakery, right? Do not get me wrong. Like this girl loves some cupcakes, but if you're not speaking to your ideal customer for that, you're, you're wasting your time and energy. And essentially you're handicapping the growth of your business. Yeah. But there's this innate or this lack of consumer or target empathy that exists with a lot of business owners that don't start with essentially putting that customer first. So if you create incredible $5 a piece cupcakes, but you're putting out content that is speaking to somebody who goes to Sam's club and buys the 24 pack for the soccer team, that you're not connecting with that person. You're not connecting with the person who's going to spend $5 on a cupcake because they're out there. Yeah. There are people that spend an insane amount of money on cupcakes, but you're not speaking to them in everything you're doing. And if you don't understand who that person is, you're not going to speak to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, it is hard. Like it's hard as hell to, yes. to do that because you know, you like what we see a lot of is people just kind of assume mm -hmm. and they go way too broad. They're like my target audience. Hmm. Is male uh, and female. Yes. Male, female. Um, they live in the uh, Midwest yep. and... Oh, they're 35 to 60. 35 to 60. Mm -hmm. I've heard 25 to 55 before. Um, That's a range. Uh, um, some have families, but some are singles. Yeah. Yeah, some are married. 
Some have dogs, some don't. Some hate dogs, some love dogs. Uh, like, mm. it, uh, yeah, it's, it's not good. And the, the reason that it's not good is because if you talk to everybody, you're not talking to anybody. Mm -mm. Because you're not relating to the people who you are trying to connect with. And this is a great segue for your toilet paper analogy. <laughs> this is probably one of my favorite analogies. So, and I know that we, you've put out a reel of me talking about this before, but yep. um, essentially everyone in the U.S., or most everyone, I hope, is using toilet paper, right? It is a basic household good. But when you go to the store, there's hundreds of types. There's super soft, super strong, great biodegradable, organic. I think organic is an option for toilet paper. Yeah. I don't know. Reusable. There's a, I don't. <laughs> and there's 75 brands and each brand has a, has a couple of different sub brands. And we, we even have to advertise for a basic human product. Like how many Charmin commercials with bears have you seen? It's a lot. Yeah. So why do we have to advertise for something that is a basic human need? And why do we have so many variations? Because each product is designed for someone different. Meaning there is somebody who needs septic safe. There are people that really want the super soft experience. Some people need a little bit stronger. Whatever those needs are, they're all designed for a different consumer and they're all advertised for a different consumer. Mm -hmm. Even though everyone is using the product. And I feel like the risk that people are afraid to claim who their target is, is, well, if I say I only want moms who are 35 to 40 that have kids that are in late elementary school through middle school and they live in suburbia, if I narrow it down too far, that's the only person I'll get. Absolutely not. No. You're still gonna have consumer behavior that will still kind of put somebody in that grouping that will make it so that you're still getting beyond that. But your ideal target is that woman. Yeah. And if you're not able to connect with her on an emotional level or understand her at an innate need level, anything you create is going to feel fake because you're not actually speaking to the person you've created it for. So I think it's important not just to like understand who they are, but you have to be willing to commit to who they are, knowing that there's going to be sales from outside that too. Yep. And it doesn't mean that you won't take that sale. You're not going to go, I'm sorry, you're 42 and your kid is in high school. We won't sell you cupcakes. Right. Like that is not a thing. <laughs> you're still going to get those end consumers and you can even have a couple of different targets. Mm -hmm. Do you need 50? No. I would say like max three targets yeah. at any point, but we are still going to get sales outside of those. It's just understanding who you're speaking with when you're trying to grow from a marketing perspective. Yeah. And, you know, to, to that point, so especially if you're listening to this and you're in this boat, I know what you're doing right now because I did it too. And I still do it on occasion. Um, uh -huh. I know right now you are thinking, well, yeah, okay, Alicia, I get it. But <laughs> I'm broken. I just need sales, so I don't want to shut anybody up. Here's the thing. First of all, there's nuance to everything, and the internet fucking hates nuance. I don't know it's why. It's true. Because um, a gray area is hard. Yeah. So with, um, with that said, what we need to understand is we have all... Like all of us have bought something that was a great product for us that we were not the target buyer for. Yeah. Like hell, the, the, so the company that did the remodel for the office, like I am not their ideal target at all, at all, mm -mm. but they still did an incredible job. And it looks so, incredible in here. It really does. They did a fantastic job. Right. So... Like, it's not that you are not going to still get those types of jobs. It's just that you're going to get less of the people that you don't want, you know, because they're not going to relate with your content as much as that, you know, 35 to 40 year old suburban mom. Um, the other piece is you're going to spend less time 
trying to develop that sale. So especially in the service industry, if you're in the service industry, I really hope you're listening right now. We know that especially with high ticket items, the selling process takes a while, right? Yeah. Like we have yep. to do multiple calls. We're my, a lot of consults. We're going to do a lot of follow-up until somebody decides that they're ready to commit. But if you have a hundred leads and only two are viable, you're spending a lot of time on 98 leads that are not ideal for you. Yeah. But what if we could target it so that you got 10 leads and two are great and you're only spending time with those 10 instead of trying to deal with a hundred leads. We would rather high quality targeted leads and that gives you more time then to go out and find more ideal targeted leads. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, that's a perfect transition back to brand. So with, with brand building, I mean, when, when you can create content that attracts the people that you want to work with, mm -hmm. it pre-vets them. It does. Like people don't like people don't come to calls unless they know what the hell is going on. Mm -hmm. And I've had plenty of people come to calls and completely waste our time. Not because they, that was the like, not because that was their intention, but because they just didn't understand what we did. Yep. And that totally stopped when I started building my brand and taking this stuff seriously mm -hmm. on social. Yep. Um, so I think that's huge. And now I, so I want to kind of talk to the people in the room that want leads tomorrow. So we've talked about organic content and that's incredibly powerful for like long-term brand building, mm -hmm. right? When we want a steady stream of leads, a steady stream of customers in six months, a year, right? We have to build a credibility. But realistically, we know it also costs money to develop a long-term funnel and we do need leads faster. So some of the ways we do that would be through paid advertising, which I know is not something that every business wants to do or is ready to do. But if you know who your ideal target is and you understand their needs, you're narrowing the amount of money you have to spend because you're very specific in where it's going to go. So especially with social media ads, social media ads are push ads, right? Mm -hmm. This person doesn't know you exist or doesn't know your product or service exists, but if you know who it's in front of, this is a great way to introduce them to your product or your service quickly before they can find it organically. And you do that again through knowing who they are, but also being very particular about how far you're willing to go. Mm -hmm. So the other option is Google ads. So if somebody's looking for a video production company and they know specifically what they're looking for, that's more of a pull ad, right? With Google, they're looking for your service. We just want to make sure that you come up a little bit higher and you're one of the first people that they see. So those are great ways of putting a product or a service in front of somebody quickly that can turn faster into a lead. It doesn't necessarily vet them as well, but it is getting you in front of more people faster. Mm -hmm and more likely for somebody to click contact me or buy here or go to your website and purchase the t-shirt that you, put, that you put out there that's hilarious. There's a reason why Shein and Timu and all of these other online companies spend so much money in advertising. Yeah, They are putting it in front of the person who's gonna buy. And if you click on an ad, chances are you're gonna see it a lot more because we're really good at retargeting. Yep. You want, you're gonna see it more than <laughs> once especially if you're in somebody's ideal target that they've built. Mm -hmm. So in terms of getting leads faster, advertising is one of the easiest ways to do it. Yeah. It doesn't have to be incredibly expensive, especially if you're a local business, keeping the geography tight is also going to help narrow the amount of money that you have to spend upfront. Mm. Um, and just being particular about knowing even who's in a certain geography. If you're a lawn care company, and you are at the higher end of the cost spectrum because your service is so much better, you're probably not going to target really small areas with lower income. It means knowing not only who your ideal target is, but where you sit in kind of that structure and also where your ideal client lives and knowing the geographies around you. Yeah. And to like, I, I say this to people all the time and like, if you need leads tomorrow, you've already lost. Yep. Like, you should never be putting yourself in a situation where it, and this, of course, 
again, comes with nuance. <laughs> but um, if you are an established business who has a proven product, has a great TAM, a total addressable market, and you know, you're like you have proof that you are good at what you do mm -hmm. because people have given you money and voted with their dollars and said, ABC lawn care company does amazing work. Mm -hmm. So if you have that, there is absolutely no fucking reason why you should be getting yourself to a point where you cannot do a damn thing and you need leads tomorrow. There's no reason for that. I also think there's something to the idea of you don't always have to go out and find new. Right. Like there is, why, why are you running out of work to do if you're already offering an amazing product or service? Exactly. So I think that's where a lot of businesses feel like, well, I constantly have to be bringing new people. No, you have to bring people back. Yep. Half of your struggle is not necessarily getting somebody in the door. It's easier to get somebody to come back after you've done an amazing job. Oh yeah. So that's where things like email campaigns can come in, retargeting and going back to some of your old customers. Hell, if you're desperate for getting more work, the best place to go is not go out and try to find new leads or try to establish your brand. Your brand is already established with your existing customer list. Yep. Go back and follow up. You're, I mean, so like a lawn care company, if you're coming up to spring and you don't have enough pro like projects for spring cleanup, why are you not going back to last year's spring cleanup customers? Yeah. Why are you not going back to your same customers that you did lawn care for last year and going, we ready to do it again? Didn't we do great last year? Or better yet, because you're an established customer, I'm going to give you five bucks off this year. Every single month. Like just go back, show your appreciation. Don't reinvent the wheel. You've already found a massive amount of customers. Why would you go back to the beginning and try to pull new? The only exception there, of course, is if you're a new business. Then we really have to look at building a new funnel. But even then, creating and continuing that communication with existing customers, that's where your money should be coming from. If you are slow and you're desperate for leads, to your point, what happened to the ones you had? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. And, you know, what I've, what I've told people, because, you know, I have plenty of people that I help grow their businesses and... They're, you know, they're fairly new. They don't have a huge customer base. Mm -hmm. My, I, I guess what I always tell them to do is warm outreach. Always. Oh, yeah. So, like, you have a, you know, a huge contact list in your phone. Those are all leads. Yep. Because they've given you permission to contact them. You have an entire email list. Or you should. And if you don't... <laughs> You, you should be building one. <laughs> well, and, and yeah, and if you don't, go back to the previous uh, the previous customers that you have. And is that hard? Hell yeah. Yeah, it's hard. But you know what else is hard? Being broke. Ne yeah, needing leads tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's it's all about being innovative. And what I what I find a lot of is and I'm guilty of this too, is when you're new, this shit's scary when things start slowing down. So you tighten up and, you know, you want to like stay tight on everything and whatever, but it's so uncomfortable to go do the warm outreach mm -hmm. or even worse, do the cold outreach. Oof. And it, instead, it's easier to just say, well, Fuck it, you know, like the like these agencies are all telling me to do this and this and this and you know nothing's happening. No, it's it's your fault. It's yeah. I mean, we don't want to say it, but yeah. Yeah. And I if mean, you go to an agency when it's already slow, you cannot expect an agency to turn it around instantly. No. I mean, even if you if you could create a mission video and 40 reels for somebody overnight, it's still not going to convert because you're not going to release all 40 reels at the same time. Nope. You're not going up to upload the mission video everywhere instantly. Like the whole point is to create a steady flow of content. Mm -hmm. So if we're reaching out immediately and saying, okay, what is the, oh, this is my least favorite question on the planet. What is the ROI on like, how much money can I expect to get back if I invest $5,000 with you? And I know other businesses will, will say, oh, well, I can get you a 
you know, a five times return, a five X return on your $5,000 investment. You can, I have great examples mm-hmm. of businesses that I've done that for, but it's not always the same conversion. And to your point earlier, if it takes 12 to 15 touches for somebody to know, like, and trust you, and it takes this much time to produce that. And if we're fixing your content, but your website is hard to navigate and we don't know how to contact you and you don't call me back when I call you, your system is the, is the issue, not your content. So it's really important to think through what is the entire flow because I can create amazing content for you. I can make super targeted ads that convert amazingly well, but if it goes to a place or it goes to basically a dead end, I can't guarantee a return on that investment. Right. I can tell you how many shares I can get you in front of, how many people I can get you in front of. Mm -hmm. I can tell you how many people clicked over. And if I can get you 10,000 people to click over to your website, I've won. Yeah. Like based on an investment like that. I've won a ton if I can get you 10,000 people to look at your website. Mm -hmm. If your website sucks, there's nothing I can do for you. No. The conversion. Well, well, I mean, we can rebuild them because you do that too. But we do. But (laughs) but even then, like it's just a if you or if you don't follow up with the customer, if you get 500 leads from the 10,000 that I've sent you, and you don't follow up with them, uh, this is not my fault. I cannot make your business successful if you won't make your business successful. Any any of these any agency that says I can guarantee you, you know, a five x return. Is also assuming that you're going to do the work when the lead comes in. Yeah. We're your partner. We're not your savior. Yeah. Yeah. That too. You know, and, and there's plenty of people nowadays that are relying so heavily on coaching and consulting and mm-hmm. agencies and things like that, that they don't take responsibility for their own growth. Yes. Or lack thereof. You know, and... Right. When... When they're not getting any business, I failed as the agency. I'm like, no, I got you all of these people. Where did they go? Right. What happened to these to these people that I sent you? Yeah. And I, so I have that conversation a lot with a lot of our clients and it's that our, and we actually do this in onboarding now where we have a, we have a list of things that our best clients have done mm-hmm. to get the best return. Yep. Like this person spent you know, six grand and they got a hundred thousand dollar return in in three months. Here's exactly what they did. They didn't just upload their fucking video. Mm. Like they didn't just put it out there. They, you know, and, and when they're being recommended in groups and things like that, they're not just tagging their own business page and letting that be. Instead, they're adding some value and, you know, typing out a little like snippet of just, Hey, this is what we do. This is what we can do for you. By the way, here's my mission video. So you can watch me and you can relate to me and you mm-hmm. can see whether or not we're even going to be a good energetic fit together. Yes. Can we just talk about that for a second? <laughs> so, yes. Uh, so I feel like there's also this belief that if, um, anybody that comes to connect with either of us should be our client. And I feel like every business or especially businesses that, um, are just getting rolling or maybe haven't come up against that. Not every customer is for you. Nope. And I clearly mildly inappropriate, kind of loud, pretty awkward most of the time and get really, really excited and talk really fast when I'm really excited about something. Um, I energetically do not match with everybody. Nope. And my agency is very similar to me because, well, I've built my brand around people that are awkward and loud and get really excited and talk <laughs> really fast. So when somebody meets with me and they're like, but I'm not like they, it just doesn't fit right. And usually we can tell in onboarding yeah. or in that first discovery call. And I've had multiple times where I've met with somebody going, listen, I just don't think we're a fit for you. And it's not because we can't do good work for you. We can, but I, I just don't think we can support you yeah. well enough because we don't jive well or we don't communicate well. But here's five other agencies that I think would be amazing fits for you. Yep. It's one of the reasons why we stay so engaged with other people in our community. Mm-hmm. I would rather have, some, have a client find the right fit than for me to take their money and have everybody be uncomfortable and unhappy. Yep. Not every client is for you. No. Or for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> No. If you cannot handle an F bomb, uh, you probably should not work with Parker. Or <laughs> or 
Like if a random fuck, fuck in the middle of a conversation makes you uncomfortable, this is not the group for you. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and I, you know, I was just gonna bring that up because that's that's also a part of my brand. And you know, our our whole business is built around authenticity and yeah. unapologetic authenticity. You know, for for me, like this is how I've always been. You know, I've, I was raised this way and, you know, I, I've always been taught to, you know, say what you think, you know, and, and even if it's going to hurt someone's feelings, as long as it's the truth and it's your truth and whatever, it's fine, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I've kind of accepted that not everyone likes and, you know, borderline like aggressive type of energy. And like, like I, I heard someone call it aggressive positivity the other day. Whoa. Yeah. So <laughs> that was a, that was like a massive, something pinged or popped in here. And that's, <laughs> yes, that is exactly what it is. Yeah. So if you don't jive with, um, you know, aggressive positivity, we're probably not going to do very well together, but we can still get you the result that you're looking for. You may just need to have a project manager who is, you know, a little bit more like us, you know, and we like, like I... For example, I don't like small talk at all. <laughs> no. Not at all. I have um, never seen you so hostile as trying to network with small talk. Yeah. I, oh, I, violent. I, I hate it so much. <laughs> but, like, tell me about, like, your biggest fear. You know, tell me, like, tell me some shit no one knows about you. You know, and hell, like, I, so... <laughs> This may stay in, this may not, but yesterday at a networking event, we were at the same table for an hour and a half. Okay. With five people. Oh boy. None of which were my target audience. And none of which really jived with me a whole lot because all they wanted to do was small talk because like everyone's just awkward. Like everyone's just like, uh, I don't know what to do. I'm just here to give you my business card. Oh, traditional networking makes me itchy. Yeah. <laughs> so I said tour, I think, I think we were about an hour in and we were all kind of coming to terms with the fact that like we have nothing else to talk about. Like we can only re-explain our offer so many times. Right. So it was miserable. And I was just like, so I like drugs, alcohol, and firearms. What are you guys into outside work? That loosened everybody <laughs> up. <laughs> you know, and, and that's the type. That's amazing. Of, except for the one older, like stuffy, white collar realtor dude. Okay. Who we don't want to talk to anyway. So yeah, he, um, he, like he was like terrified, <laughs> but you know, that's okay because you listed his three biggest fears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> so point being, um, you know, don't try to be everybody's every, or don't try and be everything for everyone mm -hmm. because you're not. And you're never going to be, and all you're going to do is spin your fucking wheels. And it sucks. Like, it's not a fun life to live to have to keep, you know, throwing noodles at the wall and seeing what fucking sticks. Like, you need to stick with a, with a strategy that you understand that works. You know, you've seen it work, so you can have the confidence in it. You know, that's why, like, Alicia and I both use our own strategies to market our own businesses. Yep. So if you're looking for an agency to work with that, you know, does what you need them to do, you need to consider the fact that there's agencies out there that use their own marketing strategies. And that alone should give you that confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I understand, like, it's scary, but so is business. So is when you quit your job to go pursue this business full time. You know, it's scary as fuck getting into something new, but if you can get through the first three months of, you know, I'm not getting any views or I'm getting some hate comments because no one trusts me yet because they don't know me because I'm not established yet. You know, once you get over that, 
it compounds. Mm -hmm. The content itself doesn't, but the audience is what compounds. You know, and, and that's why, like, how we, a lot of the time, will recycle content a lot. Like, all the, I did it yesterday <laughs> because I didn't have yeah. anything to post, you know? And I, but I understand that we need to stay in front of our target audience all the time. Mm -hmm. So I just went to the Google Drive and, <laughs> and found something. Found and, something that was there. And lo and behold, it got 500 more views than it did the first time it was posted. Mm -hmm. So what happened when we originally established the group is, you know, we'd reach out to people with a DM saying, hey, you know, here's this list of 50 Reels ideas that you can do right now mm -hmm. to start building your brand. Yep. And people would not even read the message. No. Like, they, they'd show up, they'd say, or they'd see like, hey, so-and-so, whoever, and they're automatically assuming that we have something to sell. Mm-hmm. So, and because my brand wasn't established and they hadn't seen me yet, yep. you know, they, they didn't have the context in which to make a judgment. Because there's so many people nowadays that are growing their brands and it's, it's like the 18 year old life coach, you know, mm -hmm. or, or like the divorced marriage counselor. Like we can't, we we can't necessarily trust that these people are the best people for the job if they're not expressing that they are. Right. You know, so now what happens, people no longer tell me to fuck off any, well, they still do, but, um, for not, different reasons. not, yeah, for different <laughs> reasons. Now, you know, we, we've graduated. So <laughs> now I, like yesterday, I had someone thank me for inviting them to the group. Mm, I love that. You know, and, and that's the thing is, my 50 reels that I made did not do that. Mm -hmm. It was him scrolling through my profile to see if I was legit or I looked legit. Mm -hmm. And I guess I did. So now we're here. But it requires that established and that established work and that commitment to consistency. Exactly. And I feel like that's maybe, I'm sorry for whoever I'm calling out right now. My bad. Um, the consistency piece is the part that I think for business owners is scary because you yep. don't see the turnaround to your point for months. You might have to create constantly or put out a ton of content before people really start engaging. One that your followers don't necessarily know to engage or how to engage if you're not asking them to, but also you haven't established that you know what you're doing yet. Yeah. So you have, but you have to do that consistently in order to prove that you know what you're doing. Yep. Um, and I feel like that's where a lot of business owners, like when they engage with us as agencies, they come in when they're already in crisis. Yeah. You need to engage with an agency when you're either still in growth or starting to see yourself peak a little bit mm -hmm. from what your own capacity is or what your team's capacity is. If you're already on the downhill, like we can help you get back, but it's going to go downhill a little bit longer before we can help you turn around. And it's not personal. It's not that we don't know what we're doing. It just takes time to get there. Yeah. And like, trust the fucking process. Like, and that's why I keep harping on consumer behavior and understanding how this stuff works. Because if you really just took a second to understand how this shit works, you'd realize it is a foolproof plan. Yes. Like there is it. So I love this frame. It would be unreasonable to assume that if I continued posting valuable content for 90 days, every single day for 90 days, mm -hmm. 90 posts. Yep. If I posted 90 reels, all talking about the same shit, about how you can best help your target audience, it would be unreasonable to assume that you wouldn't gain followers and get at least a lead. Yeah. Like, it's, it's not rocket science. Like, Hell, we've even worked with like a firearm store we're still working with now where their Facebook almost got shut down. They're still posting every day because mm -hmm. they understand that even though they're, they're getting traffic throttled right now because Meta doesn't like firearms, um, they're still doing it yeah. every single day because they understand that at least getting some engagement is better than no engagement, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you sitting there and, and I'm talking to you, by the way, the, like, I understand what you're doing and you're sitting here and you're listening to this and you're avoiding the real problem. You're avoiding 
picking up, you, you know, picking up the phone, recording the reel, or going in and asking your customers what the hell they want to hear. You know, why are people coming to you? Take that, make that into a reel. You're not doing that because it's scarier to do that than it is to sit here broke as fuck wondering why nothing is working. And also, you're watching this hoping that we're going to drop some magic thing right? <laughs> that's going to make you feel more comfortable and still make you millions of dollars. Yeah. I hate to break it to you. It doesn't exist. Stop no. looking. If you're listening to this podcast and you are like, oh, well, I don't have to do the things they're saying because there's got to be some easier way. There's not. Stop looking. No. Go do the damn work. Yeah. And like, that's... Like, it's crazy to me how many people forget where they came from, mm. you know, and forget the amount of work that it took, all the sleepless nights, all the, you know, the 15 hour work days to make no money, you know, and then you do it again and again and again and again and again until you finally find someone who's like, well, I mean, you're sleeping on the floor in your own office. I'm fine. <laughs> I, you know, like, like people forget about that shit. They do. Because they get soft when shit gets easy. You know, and and I love the saying, when shit gets easy is when you go hard. Yep. Because when it's easy, it's easier to grow. Yeah. You know, and, and... You have the rhythm. You have the process. You've got everything in line for you. Go harder. Exactly. Like, that's what I'm doing right now. Like, we're... I think we're, like... I don't know, 30, 40 grand off of our, um, our quarterly goal for this, you know, this first quarter. Mm -hmm. We don't need that money. Like we're doing well, but I know that if I don't keep pushing now that when, when we do need that money, it's not going to be there, Yep. you know, and then I'm just going to sit and fucking panic and want to burn my office down because I, I just am so frustrated that we're not making any money mm -hmm. and deep down you kind of realize that. You, That's on you. Yeah, it's on you and you should have maybe taken some initiative earlier. Yeah. I think the other piece that related to consumer behavior is a lot of business owners assume that people are just sitting there waiting to see you. Oh They're my God. waiting <laughs> for you. They're just sitting there just like refreshing, refresh, refresh, refresh. <gasps> oh, Prime Match finally posted something. The fuck they are. Did you forget that these people are human? <laughs> they have their entire lives. They have other things going on. And realistically, the algorithm prevents them from seeing some of your things. So you talked yeah. about recycling content. Of course you should. Because even if every single follower in that group had been there when you first used it, maybe only 10% saw you. Ooh. Because... That's the way the algorithm works. It wants to see that you are valuable in content creation before it shows it to all of your own people. Yeah. It is a it is a cycle. And if they don't know how to engage back, like a call to action on everything, book a call with me, drop a flamingo if you like this, something. Tell them what you want them to do with the information you just gave them. If you don't tell them, they won't do. Yeah. Can I also bring up, so I want to bring up this tangent. Um, I love tangents. So there's, there was a story about this, um, like huge, like billionaire CEO of, okay. of a huge, very well-known franchise. And they, uh, so their marketing department was testing ads relentlessly. And the, so the CEO comes into the office one day and he says to, you know, his marketing manager, can we like refresh these ads? Like I'm, I'm just, I'm tired of looking at them. They've been up for three months. They haven't been posted, but because the CEO was so sick of seeing them, he just kind of assumed that everyone else was sick of seeing them too. And that's like, that's what I hear a lot of is like, oh, well I've already made a video on that. Cool. Do it again. Do it Come. again. Do it different. Yeah, do it different. Wear a different shirt. I don't care if you say the exact same thing. Do it again. Yeah. Say it a different way. Like the, so the biggest personal brand people out there right now in the business space are the Hormoses. Mm -hmm. And they, like if you watch their content, they're constantly restating the same fucking stories. Mm -hmm. All the time. 
Like I have, I've reheard the story of how they got together probably 50 times. Like I can recite it to you word for word, you know? And, yeah. and it's, it's crazy because we think as creators and as the egotistical business owners that we are, that everyone is paying attention to us all the time. Of course. Because we pay attention to us all the time, you know, because we're pretty fucking cool. I but am. not everyone feels that way. Or not everybody is actually seeing it. Yeah. You could be the most incredible human on the planet. You could be Jesus Christ. And there are still going to be people who are going to miss you the first time you speak. Yeah. There is. You're just, you're going to have to say it more than once. Yeah. I, this is a terrible connection. Are you ready? Oh, God. Realistically, as a parent, I have to say the same things five times. I have three kids. I still have to say it five times. Go pick up your clothes. Time to pick up your clothes. Take your clothes off the floor and put them down the chute. Please pick up your clothes. Pick up the clothes. Five times. Would you really expect a consumer to be different? We're not. No. And the, the fact is the algorithm is making it so half the time you're muted. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. It actually is one of the best things of social media is the algorithm. Mm -hmm. As much as business owners and content creators say we hate it, it helps prevent garbage yeah. from being seen. Yeah, like when the algorithm shifted, it, it forced everyone to start making good content every time. And value adding content. Yes. It has to be funny or educational. If it is neither, uh, then why? Yeah. What, what is it there for? Or at least like entertaining. Yeah. You know, like behind the scenes stuff does really well because people just love seeing the normal daily operations. Or the thing they're not supposed to see. Yeah. Like being let in on a big secret. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's why like we, so we started doing more um, like behind the scenes on our shoots. Yeah. And we're going to start posting those because those do really well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Um, I'm going to give you goals. And I'm going to let you tell me what I need. Oh God. I feel like I'm going to, it's like a, it's like a bad business game. I'm here yeah. for it. Let's do it. Do I need like a card? Like I flip it up <laughs> like the dating game or like the newlywed game where you're like guessing wrong. Right. This I'm here for this. Let's do this. I'm, I'm good. Okay. So, um, let's see. I own a antique shop with my 70 year old husband. I am a 60 year old female who started this business about eight years ago. Um, we live in the, you know, middle of bum tucky nowhere. And we just have a very local rural town. What do I need to get more people in the door? Ooh, that's a good one. Also, I feel like I should have taken notes. Um, you should be on Facebook because your ideal customer is an antique shopper, which tends to lean a little bit older. You're not necessarily having to be on TikTok, although it's not necessarily a bad thing, especially if you're creating video content. Best thing you can possibly do is showcase new pieces all the time. Something new that came in, a different booth that came in. Um, like, hey, check out this incredible cookie jar that's really scary because it has really big eyes. Anything that's attracting attention and getting somebody curious about what other things are hidden inside. Um, you also need a website. Maybe not necessarily showcasing individual products for sale, but showcasing what it looks like when somebody pulls up. If you are in the middle of rural area, you have a lot of city folk who are looking for antiques, but are also terrified of what crazy middle of nowhere backwoods place I have to drive to, to go look at this rocking chair. So give me an idea <laughs> of what it looks like to pull in, what it looks like to walk in. You're smiling, beaming faces of you and your husband at the front counter when you're walking towards the back to go look at something. Give me an idea of what I'm walking into so I'm not terrified that I'm, I don't know, gonna go somewhere and be murdered, right? Minor, minor concerns. Um, Cause people are scared of everything, right? Um, I would also probably look at um, creating mission video, but more in storytelling about why it is you care about antiques. What is it about them? It's not just the aesthetic. What are you, is it the storytelling? Is it the history? Is it what made you want to open this place? Attach yourself emotionally to people and they'll continue to come back even if they're not sure you have new stuff. Yeah. You need to, but you need to be in multiple places. All right, I am a emergency tree service and we, we get tornadoes maybe once a year. Okay. 
and we're, you know, we're in the city, but we, we have, you know, suburbs around with a lot of trees. And we don't really have much of a target audience because we just need people like, like, you know, because trees fall on houses all the time. So we're thinking probably anywhere from, I mean, what's a good like homeowner age? Now it's like 47. I was going to um, say, it's like <laughs> mid thirties, honestly. <laughs> yeah. So, so like mid thirties to 60 ish. Okay. Um, you know, maybe dual income household, um, because I, I would assume that they would want to work with insurance more. I don't know, because I, I play with cameras. I don't cut down <laughs> trees. So anyway, um, but yeah, I'm a emergency tree service. So I only get business when shit goes wild. Perfect. So what do I do? Ooh, um, steady flow of content. I would look at doing a little bit more on TikTok, showing before and afters, showing the process. Um, uh, I would also look at Facebook and Instagram, but have your content ready so that when a storm is rolling in, you're blasting out ads so that when somebody's like, oh my gosh, a tree limb is about to fall on my house. I just saw an ad for a company yesterday. Like as soon as you see in the forecast, shit's about to go down. It's tornado season. You better throw $300 worth of ads ready to go and launch as soon as you see the weather about to go. I would say like a thousand shit. I was, I was, talking, to, <laughs> I was talking tiny geographical area, but I mean, realistically, as much as you're comfortable with spending, but you're not spending it all the time. Right. You're literally looking, if you're an emergency tree service, you are at the ready to not only go out and do the service, but you're at the ready to all of a sudden launch a massive marketing campaign. You're not necessarily worried so much about that consistency and that you want to be the best. And that's where having TikToks and short reels of process as you're going, but you're stockpiling all of this content yeah. to roll when you need it. It is emergency marketing along with emergency tree service. Yeah. Um, Facebook for sure, because homeowners tend to be a little bit older, Instagram and TikTok would be rolling about the same content. I wouldn't necessarily worry so much about like, um, running ads on TikTok. It's not going to be our ideal target that likely yeah. has a house, but it's the, um, oh, what is it called? It's the ASMR where it's like, it's something where it's really calming to watch somebody Oh yeah, Do the just satisfying. Yeah. It's satisfying to watch. That's the stuff you're going to roll out on TikTok and Instagram. And then you're going to blast emergency service and how you're there instantly and a quick 30 second video as an ad on Facebook as soon as you see weather is coming in. I love it. Okay. Um, I am a... I'm a peak performance coach for... College age kids Ooh. looking to, um, so looking for, first of all, how to get through college in the most efficient way possible and mm -hmm. like have the most fun, but also get the most out of it Yep. and prepare for tr uh, transition outside college. Mm. And I'm a remote coach. So I like how I get clients is I go to colleges and I like do presentations and you know, shit like that but I don't have an office. So I've got two for this one. You have two targets for this. You have the college age student, of course. You have the college student's parents. I'm glad that you caught that. Oh yep, yeah. I was thinking about like, the exact same thing. Who's gonna, who's gonna pay for it? Mom and dad are probably gonna pay for it if you're a college age student. Yeah. Um, but also they're the ones that are going to wanna make sure that you're lining yourself up for success. Cause we as parents typically know that having a college degree does not necessarily convert to having a job anymore. Nope. Right? So you're gonna have a parent who's hyper concerned about the success, but also the happiness and fulfillment of your child. So creating reels, but like real time reels. I wanna see somebody walking around a college campus and talking to the camera. It's ridiculous, I know. Old school, think, oh hell, early Instagram reels style. Yeah. Talk, because that's what that consumer likely was used to. Yeah. But then you're also gonna be speaking to college students. But grabbing snippets from your own presentations at college campuses, showing college kids going, yeah, I get it. Or showing your client wins and your, your, um, your student wins, but you're showing fulfillment to the students and happiness and enjoying your college career and then getting your great job while you're showing the parents 
something just a little bit different where it's your child is set up for success. They're prepared. They're ready to go out on their own. They're in a great position where the kid student you're talking to, you had a great time in college, but you still got shit done. And now you get to walk into a six figure salary because we're prepared for life after college. Yeah. I love it. So there's a reason that I brought this up. Oh no. So <laughs> I'm glad so, I'm sitting down. So I want to give a shout out to uh, one of my very, very good friends, Joe Van Giesen. Um, he actually wrote this book behind me. It's called um, Enjoy the Grind. And it's designed to help people that are in that stage mm -hmm. enjoy the grind. You know, so I, I thought his book was really um, beneficial. I've read it. And it even though it wasn't necessarily targeted at me because I, um, I actually dropped out of college to pursue the business, um, I, I still found a lot of um, very good like mental models to go through. So totally recommend that. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up because that, that type of marketing is exactly what we're doing for him. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad when I get it right. <laughs> All right. One more. All right. Um, so I am a nonprofit building consultant. Ooh. Okay. So, so I run a nonprofit myself, Okay. but my side business is running a nonprofit that helps nonprofits become nonprofits. Okay. I think my, we have like a <laughs> massive inception moment going on here. Okay. All right. So for this particular client, I would be heavily investing in LinkedIn, but in connection, especially because one, your investors are likely to be and your nonprofit investors and your connections are going to be social climbers and business climbers and leaders. I would be focusing on building almost a personal brand on there, speaking about starting nonprofits, building nonprofits, supporting nonprofits. That is where your people are going to stay connected. I would also, you're going to need a killer freaking website, mostly to explain the inception of nonprofits, helping nonprofits be nonprofits as a nonprofit. Yeah. We're going to need some website clarity on that one that can tell more of a story. Also a mission video. Nonprofits tend to have emotional triggers. Yep. We know what we're going to need to connect on an emotional level. And you're going to do that through visual storytelling much better than you're going to do it through writing. We can write the exact copy of somebody speaking and it's never going to hit the same as hearing somebody's voice, especially if it's something that ties back for them emotionally, they're going to tell the story emotionally. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of other social media, realistically, I think LinkedIn, maybe some Facebook and Instagram, but only in the way that we're showcasing nonprofits and making connections to the community that way. Um, I wouldn't be so concerned about trying to find clients or find customers from Facebook and Instagram, I would really lean into LinkedIn for that because those are going to be your people that have the financial means, but also have the drive to create something that has more of a legacy. It just happens to be legacy builders let spend more time on LinkedIn because they're climbers. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I have one more. Ah, damn it. All right. I thought I, I am I winning? Do I yes. at least have like, I, I think you're doing pretty good. I'm three for three so far. Sure. Four. How many have we done? Four. Um, Four. However many we've done, know. I've gotten them all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just because we have a lot of these people in the group. Okay. Realtors. Yes. Okay. Realty so, is fucking hard to market for. It is sort of. So here's the issue with realtors and realtors listen. This is your moment. So shut the hell up, turn the volume up. Uh, mm, realtors <laughs> pay attention. As a realtor, your product is exactly the same as every other realtor in your state. You have the exact same inventory. You have the exact same capabilities. Your commissions are limited based on what's legally allowed. What value you bring to the table is you personally. You don't build a realty brand. You build yourself as a real estate expert and supporter. If you are helping somebody to be first time home buyers, great. You need to explain that you help every single step of the way. I'm literally going to hold your hand through inspections. I'm going to be there with you. We're going to go to the signing together. I'm going to help make sure you have your paperwork done. I'm going to go through and like every single detail is covered. If you are an investment realtor, great. 
I'm gonna come to you with five different investment properties. We're gonna go through the pros and cons and we're gonna write offers on three of them. And I'm gonna make it as quick and simple as possible. That is your story, yeah. which means your video or your content needs to be quick hitting if you're an investment one, right? Yeah. If you're a first time home buyer realtor, you're gonna take it slower. We're gonna be really nurturing. We're gonna be talking slower. The videos can be a little bit more um, soft and low key. We're also going to explain in comfortable detail every step of the process. You need to build it as who you are and your ideal client. So um, when I've worked with realtors in the past, it's, well, of course I want all the clients. <laughs> yeah, me too. But you're not, your superpower is not for every client. Right. If you are a first time home buyer realtor, you're not necessarily going to be ideal for an investor nope. and a, per a person who wants to flip houses. You're just not. So pick a lane and be really, really good at it. But it's what's going to lead is your personality. Mm -hmm. So if you're a first time home buyer realtor, you're going to be on probably looking more on Instagram and you're going to be talking about how to prepare to buy your first home. You're not going to necessarily talk about, you know, the, the, this is like building long-term funnel for mm -hmm. that person. Um, you're not necessarily going to need to be on LinkedIn. You are going to have to create great content, but think again, nurturing, slower, step-by-step, step. how to prepare a year in advance when you're, you know, you're going to have to get a mortgage. How do you prepare yourself for that? All of those things are long-term builds. If you are an investment one, you're going to be faster. You're going to be on LinkedIn. You're going to be quick hitting. We have stuff to do. I know you've only got 10 seconds, so I'm going to talk in 10 seconds and we're done. Um, and then realistically, no one, and I don't know how to say this nicely. I'm probably going to get in trouble. No one gives a shit which brokerage you're going through. They, I, as, as, an, as a home buyer, I don't care whether you're with Keller Williams or somebody else. I don't. It means nothing to me. Yeah. So if you brand everything you have based on the brokerage you're with, it means nothing to me. It yeah. also means that if you ever leave that brokerage, all the content you created is now burned. You can't yeah. use it again because we can't, we can't repurpose it. We can't take the logo off. Instead, create the content as you, as a person, and the brokerage adds value to what you're doing. I choose to work with Keller Williams. I am not Keller Williams. Mm -hmm. That's so important because there's benefits to each one. And you also, if we're talking about repurposing content and needing to create and create constant churn of great pieces and reusing, you have to be able to reuse the pieces and not have it be tarnished because you've switched brokerages. Yeah. And, you know, we actually have a realtor in the group that does this incredibly well. She, and by the way, she uses all the trainings. Use the trainings. <laughs> she is fantastic. Yeah. She's, her, she's freaking awesome. Her stuff awesome. is amazing. And she, so, and, and to bring this full circle back to the, the people that we want to work with. So I, so let's put it this way. We're not the same age. Um, and uh -uh. she like, she definitely kind of, presented herself as like the traditional West Michigan business type of mm -hmm. person. So I immediately, like I walk in and I'm like, oh, this is going to be a waste. This is. And, and she knows this too. <laughs> well, I'm so, glad this isn't the first time she's finding out. <laughs> yeah. So she, um, and then she, uh, as soon as we like sat down, we, I, I don't even remember what we were talking about, but she just, I remember her saying, um, yeah, the first time I heard you say fuck, like I knew you were like the guy I wanted. And I was like, oh, okay. Sweet. You know, and that like, that also goes to show that you can't necessarily judge a book by its cover all the time. Fair. You know, for, for the clients that you want. You know, there's plenty of people that like we work with now that we've kind of had preconceived notions about, you know, because that's just human nature. Sure. Um, you know, like stereotypes exist for a reason. So, oh boy, <laughs> like just keeping it fucking real, man. <laughs> like it, it's oh true. <laughs> so, you know, we, we've unfortunately kind of assumed things in the past and they're completely different. We've also assumed wrong <laughs> before. Like we, we thought that these people were going to be, you know, a great fit for us, super like relaxed and chill. And then they're 
all of a sudden the contract is signed and they turn into a completely different person, mm -hmm. you know, and that happens too. So anyway, I just thought that was a interesting tangent, but, but there's that. I, just, um, I think she, and she's one of the people that obviously she uses all the trainings, but she is so confident in who she is and what she offers oh yeah. that for her, her content feels so natural when you watch oh, yeah. it. And then when you meet her, she is exactly like what you see on her videos. Yeah. She's authentic from beginning to end, which has so much power, especially in real estate. If it feels like, I don't know who that person is, or it feels really inconsistent and all over the place man, I don't trust you with the biggest investment of my life. It is harder to get out of a house than it is to get out of a marriage. Yeah. It is It is a full long-term commitment that is you're financially tied to. It can control a lot of other things. I need to be able to trust the person that I'm working with. And yeah. if that person says, fuck, and it makes me feel more confident, I'm here for it. Yeah. If that person needs to handhold me and I need to feel supported every step of the way, then that's the person that I'm going to go seek out. Yeah. Which means you can't fake who you are as a realtor or really in any business, but especially when you're one-to-one -one human interaction. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Like I've had people at networking events that were local. Mm -hmm. um, they're like, I feel like I've seen you before. And the reason that they feel that way is because I wear the same thing in just about all of my videos. It's true. It, it's always some sort of swag and it's typically got the logo on the upper left chest. Meanwhile, I absolutely... I know hate you hate wearing swag. Hate it. Um, I just live flamingo. I, clear, I clearly don't have to wear it. <laughs> With exception off. today, I actually did almost brand myself today. Almost. It also helps that I hid flamingos throughout your studio. And yes, I'm going to rehide them. You're welcome. Oh my God. Anyway, so, um, so yeah, like I, so I have this, um, this white quarter zip that everyone has seen now because it's different, mm -hmm. you know? And like, I think it looks fucking cool, you know? And I, I wear that to shoots. I wear that in video shoots. And, um, the only reason I'm not wearing it today is because I wore it yesterday to a shoot. Um, so, you know, it's, there's something to say about consistency mm -hmm. because when you get consistent enough to be recognizable, in a local community, yeah. you have a hell of a lot of power. Because there were people at that last networking event um, who knew who I was just because we were friends on Facebook. They had no idea who I was. Mm -hmm. Like they didn't even know my name. But they're like, I've seen you everywhere. Yep. And the reason is, is because we're consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it just, I know this isn't gonna get through to everybody. And that's, What's so frustrating about this is that people don't like people will find every fucking excuse as to why this shouldn't work yep. or, or why it can't work for them. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing is, is if you just put the same amount of effort that you're putting into trying to explain why it can't work into making it fucking work, you'd be a hell of a lot further ahead and you'd be a hell of a lot happier. Your pockets would probably be deeper too. So there's that. All right. So let's, let's wrap here with, um, so tell me something that nobody knows about you. That's a horrifying question. Um, can you narrow the scope a little about anything just how tell tell the world something that no one has ever heard before about you i don't know honestly i tell Bullshit. i have no i have no shame <laughs> none um i am actually terrified of ladybugs what <laughs> Um, a, a few million lifetimes ago, okay. I was working for a company and one of their big things was sustainable farming. So I went to one of their sustainable farms and they were showing us how they treat for aphids. And he has this big bag, like burlap bag next to him, kind of like at his waist. And he puts his hand in and he is talking about the very scientific way that they um, treat for aphids. And he pulls out a handful of ladybugs. No. And just 
chucks them into the field. So he was joking about it being scientific, right? Meanwhile, I am watching all of these ladybugs fall out of this bag and fall off of him and they're crawling all over him and they're crawling towards me. We're talking hundreds of ladybugs. This is, I'm maybe 22, 23. And ever since Damn. then, having ladybugs, more than one near me, freaks me out. I That's freaking wild. hate ladybugs because I'm watching a sea of them. I can still, in my head, remember watching them come across the ground and like spreading out. Like, ugh. So I am afraid yeah. of ladybugs, but only in large quantities. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> there you go. So, so I, you know what's going to happen now? Somebody who legitimately hates me and watches this is going to send me a box of freaking ladybugs. It's going to be It's going to be you. Yeah. You're just going to drop it off at my doorstep. It's going to be worse than like the flaming poo of the old days, right? Mm -hmm. The dog poo. It's going to be a big exploding box of ladybugs. Yeah. Yep. I already hate you. <laughs> All right. So for the people who don't know who you are, um, first of all, um, well... Let's recap what you do and where can people find you? So I am Alicia James. I'm the owner of Flamingo Consulting. Uh, we do all things digital marketing, organic content, social media development, uh, branding, ads, Google ads, social media ads, website design. If it shows up on a phone, we typically are messing with it all the time. Show us video now too. Um, <laughs> which <laughs> apparently means that we got to do more video. Um, and... Uh, you can find us on Facebook, on Instagram. You can find us on LinkedIn. Search for Flamingo Consulting LLC. You can also visit our website, flamingoconsultingllc.com. Remember to add the LLC or you're not going to find the right one. Um, and really, you can find me out in the wild fairly often. I love getting off of my couch and going to different networking events and kind of shaking things up and being awkward in public, which is always fun. Yeah, because um, that's... That's how we met. So we met through Facebook, but we formally met through very informal coffee. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> it, was, it was, what do you do and how, and do I want to hire you? And then it was, but it was, it was a very, it was supposed to be like half an hour. And I think it was an hour and a half in. We're like, oh, we had to, we have to go. Yeah. Yeah. That was, it <laughs> was an odd one. <laughs> and look at us now. And now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. So. Um, if you own a small business and you um, are under half a million a year and you're looking to uh, build your brand on social with video marketing, we have a free Facebook group called Video Marketing Secrets for Local Businesses. It's on Facebook. <clears throat> it is a private group technically, but just request and we will let you in. It's just private so that we keep out marketers and keep everything um, as to, so that we keep everything, you know, succinct with what we want the, the group to be and so everyone's not spammed. Um, other than that, if you want to find us um, and what we do, if you are between that 500,000 and 5 million a year mark and you are looking to outsource all your video content and you know actually get some results with your, your video content and build some no like, trust, and authority in your local market, um, we would absolutely love to talk to you. You can find me on Facebook mainly. Um, after Tuesday, we are diversifying, but <laughs> um, but yeah, you can uh, reach out to me on Facebook or on our website, which Flamingo is actually redoing right now, um, and uh, contact at primemedmedia.com if you're old school and like email like I do. Um, that is pretty much it. I appreciate you being here, and I hope you guys learned something. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns for either myself or Alicia, just leave them in the comments, and we will try and get to those. Um, and until next time, this has been uh, episode I lost track of the camera roll crop. Perfect. All right, cool. <laughs>